food sector can bring change to the world through reducing carbon emissions, water consumption, and land use. I am Dr. Juan Carlos Motamayor, the head of the food sector at NEOM. Our mission, which is to invest in water to relieve hunger, can change how the food is produced. I am Azalia Alma Shafira, CEO of Banu Indonesia. With this technology, farmers can actually do more things with less cost and less time. For me, a change maker means keeping up with all the changes and doing something about it. We can produce food in the desert. We can produce food anywhere in the world. Sally. Very good to see you again. Nice to meet you too again. So, Asalea, it was great to meet you at the Food for Future Summit. And I would love to hear about your experience in Indonesia. Thank you so much. And speak a little bit more about uh, Banu itself. It's a startup that me and my team have founded in 2018. And we have this kind of discussion about how technology can actually uplift the small-scale farmers. We want the technology to be something that they could count on. For example, a remote water quality monitoring uh, system with aeration and also sensors, so they can even just use their phone to know how bad or good their pond is. That, that, that's great. So specifically, again, in aquaculture, what do you think is the biggest challenge? There are several big challenges, but I think the root problem is actually the quality of the water. We can't just treat fish like a um, just creature. If the water quality is bad, they feel uncomfortable. This will cause a ripple effect of mortality rate. A lot of fish will die and it will be uh, just gathered in the base of the pond, which will create a toxic waste. So this kind of uh, situation about water quality is really urgent because it causes a ripple effect of diseases, mortality rate, and also climate change. All right, so I want to know more about how NEOM is changing the food sector. What is your perspective on this? So in NEOM, we are contributing to solve the biggest challenges in the world in multiple sectors. And in the food sector, there are three key challenges. One is how to produce food with less water, because with the increase of the population and due to climate change, water is more and more scarce. Indeed, if we can produce economically food in the desert, we can produce food anywhere in the world. And this is important not only for Saudi Arabia, it's about preparing the world for climate change. The second one is about reducing gas emissions. And we are tackling that through promoting the consumption and the production of plant-based protein and focusing on sourcing food as much as possible through local sources. The third issue that uh, we are working on is related to chronic diseases caused by food. The objective is to make people more conscious about what they are eating and about how their metabolism, how their genetic makeup, and how their microbiome react to the food they are consuming. So now, please tell me, how this interest in aquaculture started? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to share about that, because it actually stems from uh, my curiosity about how does the food uh, on my plate came, uh, came here? Where did that come from? I study more about the food production, and the more I study, the more confused I get, but the more excited I get too. It's becoming a time that we actually need to save our food. So I think with this urgency, plus my curiosity really uh, helped me and motivates me to stay in this sector. What about you? What about the feeling of you know, feeling proud, and what's the moment that made you feel like that? Well, actually, it was in your country, in Indonesia, in, in Sulawesi, working on the chocolate tree or cacao. We increased the world average in Indonesia farms by 10 times, combining genetic improvement and agronomic technologies. That allowed them to increase their income, but also use less land and then diversify their income by producing other crops in the same plots. Uh, very proud of the work we did with the team at the time in Sulawesi. So, what's your favorite food from Indonesia? Yeah, well, actually, I started to appreciate nasi goreng. 
Ah, so, nasi goreng, yeah, yeah. fried rice. <laughs> every time I go, exactly, every time I go to Indonesia, I ask nasi goreng because I really miss it. And speaking about like the future, what do you see uh, as the future of the food sector? How do you see it? Well, there are significant improvements on the use of plant-based raw materials to mimic the texture, the flavor of meat. And I believe that will make a, a big difference in terms of how sustainably we consume proteins in the future. So how do you think your company will evolve and continue contributing to improve aquaculture? I feel very optimistic in that sense too, because um, people are realizing that we can be productive and sustainable at the same time. And I feel like, okay, this is becoming something big and I'm quite optimistic this will get bigger as time goes on. And I hope that Banu and uh, our technology can really bring a positive impact to these fish farmers all around the world. So Sally, it was a great pleasure to have met you. I hope we will be in contact and we will be working together in aquaculture. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. I'm looking forward to meeting you again and to work and collaborate with you in the near future. Thank you so much, sir.